you might be thinking about moving to West Orange, New Jersey. And if you are, you're in the right place because today we're gonna to take a tour of West Orange on the suburbs of New York City channel and you're not gonna to wanna to miss this one. We're gonna talk real estate, shops, restaurants, everything you need to know if you're thinking of moving to West Orange, New Jersey. Hey, if this is your first visit to the channel and you're looking to learn everything there is to know about the suburbs of New York City, then subscribe below and tap the notification bell so you can be the first to hear about the current market here in New Jersey and even New York. Hey, I'm Jeff Massey, your local realtor, and we get calls every day from people just like you who are thinking about moving to one of New York City's amazing suburbs, and we love it. So whether you're moving in seven days or seven months, give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email so we can help you make an easy, stress-free move to the New York City area. So as I mentioned at the top of the video, we're here in West Orange, New Jersey, and I'm actually standing in front of a monument to Thomas Edison and his invention of the light bulb. Now stick around to the end of the video, we're gonna talk about Thomas Edison's house and the neighborhood he lived in, so you're not gonna to wanna to miss that. But in the meantime, let's talk about this particular sculpture because it was placed here on the 100th anniversary of the invention of the light bulb. That was in 1879 by Mr. Edison and the town was actually incorporated in 1863. So just six years before he made the invention. And the reason why this is so special to this location is because Thomas Edison's laboratories were just down the road. We're gonna go take a look at those in a minute. And he he called West Orange home. It's, it's kind of funny because there's Edison, New Jersey, but actually he lived in West Orange. Now a little bit about the town, there's it's home to 48,000 people. It was incorporated, as I said, in 1863. We're in the county of Essex, and the overall area of this town is 12.13 square miles. That works out to about 4,000 people per square mile. Now we're close to Livingston, which is, which is just west of us. We are right at the peak of the Wachung Mountain kind of chain, if you will. So we have some really high views down to the city. Later, we'll be going to check out Eagle Rock Reservation, which is one of those views. And you've also got South Orange, just to the south of us, Orange, just kind of to the southeast of us. If you keep going further to the south, you've got Short Hills, Milburn, and Maplehood. Uh, that's just a sampling of some of the towns that are close by. Now to the north, you've got Montclair, and Glen Ridge, and Verona. So just give you an idea of where we are. But let's jump into the video and talk a little bit more about West Orange, New Jersey. In terms of school in West Orange, you've got eight elementary schools, pretty well spread out, three middle schools and one high school. I'll drive by the high school and show you some of the footage there. They have a really amazing sports complex, athletic fields there. Now, in terms of commutes, what a perfect place to be talking about commutes because we can see the city from here. So the one thing about West Orange is it doesn't have a train station. So it's not technically a midtown direct suburb. You can take the bus from here. The bus would be about an hour and 30 minutes and that's from Prospect and Marcella Ave. But your, probably your best option is to head over down to South Orange and Orange. From there, you've got Mountain Station, Highland Ave and Orange Station. So Mountain Station, you're about 38 to 46 minutes into the city. Highland Ave, you're about 40 to 50 minutes into the city because that one's more of a sort of, I call it like a local stop. You're gonna get like the longer trains that stop everywhere. But your best option if you can get over and find parking is Orange Station. That's gonna give you 30 to 39 minutes into the city in the morning, depending on which particular time you take. But your best one is 30 minutes. So that's a super fast commute. Obviously you have to factor in the time of driving over there, parking, figuring that out. And then once you get into Penn Station, depending on where you work, you're gonna have that extra 10 to 15 minutes on the subway or walking. Again, it depends if you're going uptown, downtown, east, west. So you gotta factor all that in. But I think that gives you a little bit of an overview of schools and commute. And I'm just loving this view up here. We're right behind the September 11th Memorial. You can see all the names they have engraved here. So let's keep walking and let's talk about restaurants. Food is always critical to where you're gonna move and you gotta love the restaurants. Now behind me, this is more of an upscale establishment. This is the High Lawn. We're up here at the Eagle Rock Reservation. The High Lawn's more of a, like I said, upscale. You're gonna have that beautiful view down to the city right behind me. It's rated 4.6 stars on Google with over 400 reviews. I'm assuming you could probably have a lot of events type wedding type things there, but they also have dining. Now in terms of your day-to-day -day life, you've got you know all the sort of 
good chain restaurants that you might go to, your sort of go-to restaurants, but you also got some cool places like, for instance, Kim's Sushi. This one's rated 4.7 stars on Google with over 1,300 votes. Also down the street from me, just across the road, you've got the Chit Chat Diner. You've also got an amazing view from there into the city. And that's 4.4 stars with 3,200 votes. And lastly, one of the other ones, you know, I like Italian food. So I picked out Primavera Restaurant and that one's over by the high school. That one is 4.6 stars. It only has 125 reviews, but something you might want to check out if you're over here in West Orange, New Jersey. I almost forgot, we have mentioned Eagle Rock Reservation before. If you haven't seen it before, I'll link it down below. Our video of Montclair touches on Eagle Rock Park. And Montclair actually is just down there. It's literally like basically on the other side of the road down there. And it goes down in the downtown Bloomfield Avenue there. If you haven't seen that, check it out. I've actually got two videos on Montclair, so I'll link both of those down below. One's of the downtown and one's of Upper Montclair. You should definitely go check that out if you're interested in that area. But let's continue, there's a lot more to see. There's tons of things to do here in West Orange, New Jersey. Now I'm up at the top of Eagle Rock Reservation. We're just at the northeast corner of the city and you can see from here we're on a ridge, amazing views down to the city. New York City straight ahead, downtown, midtown Manhattan. You can see Billionaire's Row with all those super tall buildings. And you can see Fort Lee in the distance. Then going this way, you've got Newark. And in the distance, you can even see the Verrazano Bridge. So from here, one of the highest points in the tri-state area in terms of like being close to the city and amazing views from up here. Now there's a lot of other things to do here in West Orange. We're gonna check out the Essex County Park system is really amazing. We're gonna go check out Turtleback Zoo in a little bit. They've got a really cool ice skating rink there and the zoo, as I mentioned, there's also a really cool pond that has boating. There's miniature golf there. Lots of amazing things you can do. There's also an awesome playground. It's like a big sort of like a shipwreck looking thing that you can take the kids over to. So plenty of things to do here in West Orange. Lots of golf courses as well. Let's jump over and I'll show you a couple of those spots. One of West Orange's really nice attractions for evening and even daytime and weekend entertaining is the AMC Theater. Inside here you have dine-in options. You can also get your regular popcorn and stuff like that, but you can pick your seats and then tell the concession stand where you're sitting and order things like burgers and fries and stuff like that. So that's a really cool thing to have in your backyard and go out and enjoy a movie. Something a little bit different that we've been doing for the past three years. So. AMC, definitely something to check out. Just around the corner from the movie theater is the Essex Green Town Center and shopping area. And over here, it's more like chain stores. You've got like Petco and you do have some food options here like Panera. There's also a TJI Fridays over there. And on the other side, it's not really part of the shopping center, but there's an LA Fitness. Now on the back side of here, you have one of your big shopping options, which is ShopRite Food Center. And we're gonna go over and see a couple other stores just on the road. I just popped over here to the Whole Foods. I was planning to get out and talk about shopping centers in the area, but it's actually super windy outside. So I'm gonna save you from the torment of the terrible audio quality and stay in the car. But yeah, in terms of good shopping here in West Orange, you've got the Whole Foods Market right behind me. Over by the AMC Dine-In movie theater that we were just at, you've got the shop right over there at the Essex Green Shopping Center. The other thing that's interesting is just down the street from me, you have the West Orange Foodery. That's a kosher market. And on Google, they have five stars with 17 reviews. Something you might wanna check out to get some specialty items over there. probably wondering about the real estate prices and that might be one of the reasons why you clicked on this video. So let's talk about it. So in the last 12 months, it's had 595 
transactions from the time of this filming. Now I did the research a couple weeks ago, so it's a little off, but the average days on market of those were 28 days, so pretty quick, under a month. And the average list to sold value was 107%. So very competitive market. The average price was about $581,000 over all property types. So let's break it down by size. You've got one bedrooms, there was a couple. That average is about 225,000. Two bedrooms were about 414,000. Three bedrooms were 533,000. So right in that mid range that averaged out. Four bedrooms were 650,000 and five bedrooms plus were 799,000 overall. Now those are average obviously. Now I've got a couple interesting comps that I drove by just to take a picture of to show you what you can get as a specific anecdotal example. So starting at the lower price range, we've got four Westwood Drive North. This was 50 days on the market. It was a 1957 Cape Cod style with a 2017 renovation, sold for 500,000. And it was listed for 489. So it actually went a little bit above asking. So there was some competition there at the end of the 50 days, interestingly. It's a four bed, two bath on 0.17 acres and about 1,126 square feet. Another one that was a little bit higher in value was 72 Winding Way. This sold for 750,000, it listed for 699. So it went a little bit above asking again. This was only 15 days on the market. 0.28 acres, 1936 build, renovated in 2022. That was a four bed, two bath, and two half baths. So lots of interesting features in that home. Now the larger home that I picked out here for today was 723 Eagle Rock Avenue. This one sold above a million. It was just below 1.1 million. And it the listing was on the market for 61 days. It was built in 2022. So I think it was a gut renovation. It might actually, it's hard to tell. I looked at like the, the previous street view. So they might have knocked it down actually. It's hard to tell. This one's a six bed, four and a half bath on 0.27 acres. So a little bit larger piece of land as on a corner lot too, which was nice. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of what prices are going for in the area. The list to sold that 107% is pretty high. So it shows you it is a very competitive location. I hope those three listings give you an idea of what's out there. As always, if you're interested in learning more about the area and taking a private tour, definitely check the link below. We've got a, a link where you can set up a chat with us. We can do like a video call and learn more about what you're looking to do with real estate. We'd love to help you on that venture. We're standing in front of one of Thomas Edison's laboratories when he was doing a lot of his experiments and building out a lot of the infrastructure that he used for the light bulb and other electrical projects that he did. And right now it's closed, but it's actually a national park. It's going to open back up in March, but it's winter right now. So it's a little cold and I guess they close it down in the winter. Not as many visitors, but what a cool artifact to have in town. And you can see the old water tower in the back there. It says Edison on it just really interesting history here in West Orange. Just behind me is the entrance to Llewellyn Park, which we're gonna talk about a little bit on the map. But first, before we jump into the map, I wanted to explain that this was actually the home of Thomas Edison. Now, this is a very large gated community in the boundaries of West Orange. But Thomas Edison, where we were just down the street at his laboratories, Thomas Edison lived in Llewellyn Park at 119 Park Way. Now, Today, it's part of the National Park Service, and you actually can go on tours of that if you visit the laboratory first and then get a pass to go up to the house. Unfortunately, I can't show you video of that, so I'm gonna jump into a map tour so we can see some of the photos that other people have shared and tell you a little bit more about the area. Let's jump in and talk about that. As promised, here we are with the map of West Orange, and you can see some of the places we are going to see or already saw. We were already up by the Whole Foods Market. We were already checking out the Turtleback Zoo down here. But what I was telling you about is Llewellyn Park, which is actually this part right here. It goes up against 280 and then cuts along this curving road down here to the Thomas Edison Park. So let me type in Llewellyn Park. You'll see the actual boundaries. So let's just jump in there. Basically, like I said, it's 280 and then going around here, Eagle Rock Avenue 
up and around. Actually, I think it kind of cuts through here because these are these are different homes. So it kind of cuts through here. And where, where I was standing in the photo was right here on Main Street. And the Thomas Edison house that I was telling you about is right here. This is the part of the National Parks tour. It's this beautiful red brick building. It's got this nice little widow's walk on top. These four huge chimneys, this beautiful glass conservatory. There's also another part that has the garage on the other side. And you can see some of these old fancy cars that he had. Very beautiful home and it's been restored and well kept by the Parks Department. You can see some of the red brick details here. Some of these beautiful like curved brick pieces around the window work. Amazing, amazing details in this home. But I wanted to tell you a little bit more about Lou Ellen Park, the neighborhood. So this is their website, Lou Ellen Park's website. Gives you a little bit of a history lesson. You can see it was actually founded in 1857 by Llewellyn Solomon Haskell, the New York businessman. And if you remember from the beginning of the video, I said that West Orange was actually incorporated in 1863. So this was six years before the city of West Orange was actually incorporated. As I mentioned, one of the most famous residents was Thomas Edison at Glenmont, as well as some other famous residents, James Miller McKim and the Merrick family, also the Colgate family. Interesting guests have included Eleanor Roosevelt, President Clinton, Governor Richard Cody. Some of the architects that have worked here include Stanford White, Charles McKim, Robert A.M. Stern. Now, the video that I'm gonna point you to at the end is a beautiful home designed by Deborah Burke Architects, more of a modern style. So let's just go back to the map really quick where we were before was the National Historic Park here. This area is where the factory was. So as you can see, it's that was the factory. And then just like two, three blocks down the road is the main entrance to the park. Here's Park Way going up to Glenmont. And the home I'm gonna talk to you about is on Tulip Avenue, which is right here. Here's that modern house, 16 Tulip Avenue. We're gonna go see that in a minute, but I just wanted to show you sort of the, you can see just based on the density here, it's a very private community. A lot of trees that surround the homes and a lot of larger size lots in Llewellyn Park, three acres, sometimes even bigger. And then comparing that to just the rest of the town, you can see West Orange here. Some of the neighborhoods are a little denser compared to Llewellyn Park. But yeah, like I was saying earlier as well, you've got these lots of golf courses, Essex County Country Club, Crestmont Country Club, Essex Falls Country Club. Lots of beautiful courses to check out. And then at the top here, you've got the Montclair Golf Club is actually partially in West Orange. One other thing I forgot to mention here to go back is, I think what is super interesting is it's actually the first planned community in America. They have that superlative to add to their history. So interesting part here, they actually have it in the logo. It's part of the logo. And this is a drawing of that of that old gatehouse that we showed. Just a very interesting piece of architectural history and urban planning history. So let's continue the tour. If you're interested in seeing a home for sale in Lou Allen Park, I've got another video coming up right now of a modern house designed by the famous Deborah Burke Architects. Let's go take a look. I'll see you over there in the next video.